In this video, I want to talk about setting up FileMaker Cloud directly on AWS Marketplace using one of the pre-canned SKUs that are made available directly by AWS. What I mean by this, if you go to the Amazon Marketplace and you search for FileMaker, you're going to see that FileMaker is selling a pre-canned set of tiers where you can buy a five pack of FileMaker for your team of five users or a 10 pack of FileMaker or a 25 pack of FileMaker or a 100 pack of FileMaker. Now also here you have the option of BYOL which is bring your own license. Now we're going to cover that in a different video. However, if you need five, 10, 25 or 100, then buying it direct on the Amazon Marketplace might be the way to go. Now we start off the purchase process in both situations at the same location, but the process takes a little bit of a fork and changes about halfway through if we're doing the bring your own license option. However, if you're selecting 5, 10, 25 or 100, it may be advantageous to buy the links directly here within Amazon. And so here are the benefits. If you're in the evaluation mode of trying out FileMaker and you want to try it for a couple weeks, then this is definitely the area where you want to click on one of these and do a 15-day trial. Now FileMaker talks about a 15-day trial on Amazon's Marketplace. The free trial part only applies to the FileMaker software. There's no 15-day free trial for Amazon's virtual servers. So even if you want to try FileMaker Cloud for free, during that period you're still going to have to pay for the virtual server. But if you're looking purely for a free trial, that's not really something that's available. Additionally, if you want to get a FileMaker license and a virtual server that you pay for effectively on an hourly basis, then these are the SKUs that you want to purchase. If you do the BYOL license option, that is an annual purchase option only and so the on-demand or hourly option is not available at the BYOL. So for hourly usage or on-demand, which over the long term is way more expensive, but if you want to run it for a month or so, it's cheaper than doing an annual, then that's another reason why you'd want to choose one of these SKUs. Keep in mind that the prices contained here for the 5, 10, 25, and 100 right here are specific for business and government pricing only. If you're education or nonprofit, then those discounts will not be reflected in these prices. Education and nonprofit should jump to the video where we talk about purchasing BYOL. Now, obviously, I keep saying 5, 10, 25, 100, and you're going, well, I need 15 or I need 35 or I need 65 licenses for FileMaker. If you need to buy a tier that's not one of these four, then jump to the other video and follow us through the BYOL purchasing sequence. Okay. Now the first thing you're going to need to do if you're going to go through this process is create an Amazon AWS account. Not even an account with FileMaker, just an account with Amazon AWS. You're going to end up going to this screen here. And you're going to go through this process right here, which I'm going to skip forward on. We're going to assume that you have the ability to create your own Amazon AWS account. So once you get your account set up, what I want to do is dive into my AWS Amazon console. If you're a more technical person and you want to dive into some of the cool stuff that Amazon does, or maybe you've seen this before, this Amazon console is alternately very cool and also kind of scary because it's got a million things in it. So I'm going to sign into my Amazon console because I need to do one thing before I spin up my server. I have an account that gives us access to this area here. This is all the stuff that Amazon AWS allows us to do. Virtual servers, huge amounts of storage, replication here and there and everywhere. I mean this is a massively awesome system and what you're seeing is the menu options this is like a restaurant menu for what Amazon AWS gives us 
And given the fact that the world's largest company and the most successful company in this infrastructure business, you can tell there's a tremendous amount of technology behind each of these buttons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the region that I'm interested in spinning up my server in. Once again, you're going to want to make sure that the FileMaker Cloud is available in the region you want to roll it out to. Initially, you'll see immediate support for North America. Then from what I understand, you'll see support for EMEA or the European folks. And then after that, under some schedule that FileMaker knows, you're going to see support in other regions. So I'm going to go ahead and select a uh, West Coast setup here. So we're already on that. I'm going to select EC2, which is the area that manages the virtual servers. So at this point, I want to give you a couple terminology items if you haven't seen these yet. So AWS is this giant infrastructure organization. EC2 is the area that's called Elastic Cloud Compute. Basically, it's a fancy name that should say virtual servers. So if this said virtual servers dashboard, then that's what EC2 is. So EC2 is like the overarching technology that runs the virtual servers. An individual virtual server is called an instance. It's an instance or an occurrence of a virtual server. So they call them instances. At this moment, I have none that are running right now. If I had five FileMaker servers running up here with five FileMaker clouds, I'd see five right here, but I see I have zero. Now the first thing we want to do is set up our key pair and this is a security thing that we have to do. I'm going to go to key pair here. I'm going to say create key pair. Now when you're doing this for the first time, you're not going to see any key pairs here for you. You're just going to have a blank screen. I'm going to say create key pair. I'm going to give the key pair a name. I'm going to call it RCC key four for now. I'm going to say create and it creates the certificate file that goes actually on my computer. And the rub is that it sits here on my computer when you download it, at least on a Mac, it gives it a name with an extension of text file. We need to fix that. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the text on it and delete it. I'm gonna use this PEM extension here. And of course, then the Macintosh identifies this as being a certificate, an authorizing certificate to identify who we are. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that on my desktop. I'm going to say RCC key four. So this is all set up. We're ready to go now. We're going to go ahead and search for FileMaker once again. And you're going to select one of the tiers, the 5, 10, 25, or 100 tier. I'm going to go ahead and select 5-pack of FileMaker Cloud. And I'm going to end up on this page right here that we can see. And I'm going to notice down here that I can specify whether we're going to dive into this subscription in an hourly mode or an annual mode. Now we can switch it later on. If you're going to use the FileMaker Cloud more than about six weeks or so, seven weeks, then you're actually money ahead to go ahead and switch to annual, even though you don't need it annually. But that's the kind of discount you're looking at. So I'm gonna go ahead and, in my case, select hourly. I'm going to press the continue button at the top right, right here. And so I need to accept the software terms. Very important that we accept the software terms. I'm going to hit accept software terms. And now we can see a note at the top that we are going to be sent an email. But before we go looking for emails and things like that, what we need to do is take a look at the usage instructions. It's very important. Usage instructions, in my opinion, is a little bit mislabeled because really what that should say is spin up an Amazon instance and get things going. And so I have a choice of the available regions that FileMaker Cloud is currently available. Now we only see US East, US West at this point, but in the future you're going to see Europe, Asia Pacific, things like that. So in this screen area here you're going to see this list continue to evolve. And of course this user interface is a little bit on the rough side. I could see this being tuned up as a little bit of behind the scenes uh, going on here is that FileMaker is trying to make this as simple as possible, but they're also working within the limits of the Amazon AWS marketplace. And the marketplace is this kind of online shopping center that Amazon runs. And so that online shopping experience has certain limitations as to how things are set up and run. And so FileMaker is kind of bumping up against the limits of that. 
Otherwise, an ideal world, this would be a nice pretty screen with a pop-up window that would say pick the region, etc. In this case, we need to look down here, pick the one we want. I want Oregon. I'm going to click this button right here. Now, it pops me with a window here to create a stack. The stack is basically the elements that are going to be used to create the virtual server. It's all pre-canned. It's all been pre-worked out by FileMaker. You don't have to do much thinking here at all. You just have to follow the steps. Now, these are steps that you have probably never seen before. Don't let it throw you. Just follow along here. We're going to just use the pre-canned settings that we have here. It's a pre-canned template that will build our server for us. And I'm going to say next. And then we have to give it a stack name. A stack name is our server name. Once again, we have an instance. The instance is created by the stack. That being said, in an ideal world, this would say server name. I'm going to call it RCC test 9. So this is our uh, ninth test server that we've been playing with and setting up. I'm going to give it an email account. For the time being, I'm just going to use the email account that I used when setting up the AWS uh, account here. Now the next item down below is the size of instance. This is the server size from small, you know, 20, 30 bucks a month, maybe less than that if you buy it for a period of time. That'll run a small group of people all the way up to a server that will run 100 people. And this one is anywhere between, say, 650 bucks a month and $1,500 a month. It's a lot of money. Now if you don't know which server to pick, we have a video that talks about the probable server size. So I'm going to go ahead and select small. I also have to select the key that we set up. This is the security key that we need to have. And I'm going to say RCC key 4. Uh, I'm going to say next. We have a, another optional screen here, which we don't need to use anything here. We're just going to leave this blank. I'm going to hit next. This gives us a final review page. And this says down here at the bottom, I confirm that Amazon CloudFormation will uh, build the server and create necessary security uh, settings for it. IAM is the area of security and cloud formation basically is a fancy way of saying the automatic construction of our FileMaker cloud server. So cloud formation is actually a service that Amazon has and FileMaker Incorporated is using that to automatically build the server. So we don't have to go through the process of doing that. So I'm going to say create so what we can see here is that we have RCC test 9 and crate is in progress. Now this takes somewhere around 11, 12, 13 minutes for this to operate and uh, run. So now what we're waiting for is Amazon to actually build the server for us. So instead of us having to sit and actually do the installation, Amazon is doing it for us. It's building the whole thing. It's really quite cool. I've logged on to my email account and I see this initial email that was sent to us early on in the process when I accepted the terms and conditions. At this point though, this email doesn't do much for me. It's an email that we should probably save. What I want to do is wait for a confirmation email that will be sent to us after about 10-11 minutes confirming that our instance has been set up and is now running. So this just tells us that we've accepted the terms and we've kind of started our subscription. The next email will confirm that our virtual server is actually running, right? Makes sense? All right, so I uh, walked away and I came back and this was done for me. So it uh, shows it's complete here and then I got an email right here. Now, at this moment, it's not totally operational yet. We have to bring up this email and take a look at this. And what it says is basically, welcome to AWS and FileMaker Cloud. We're gonna need to put some information in and then the final uh, configuration will be done. So I'm going to hit uh, continue right here. So to get my Amazon account number, I have to go back into the AWS console. Now the AWS console is where we set up our key pair, etc. And so I'm going to bring up our console right here. And I can go up here under my account. And up here, we're going to fuzz out part of the information, but you'll get the point. There's this number right here. I'm going to copy it move it out of the way. In fact, I'm going to move that out of the way and I'm going to come down here and paste this in. Now, the host name here is somewhat customizable. You can customize this to be anything you want. Now, just to keep my life as simple as possible, I'm going to say RCC test 9 again. And then I'm going to set up a password for this. Now, FileMaker is very uh, serious about 
the number of um, characters and things like that. I just did one, two, three, four, and it says now I need a serious password with uppercase and a special symbol and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go over here and put in my password that I've been using lately. And then I'm going to specify the local time zone. Specifying a time zone is kind of important. And the reason is, is that there's maintenance and things that go on with the FileMaker Cloud and it takes into account our local time zone so it doesn't do it in the middle of the business day. We cover that in a video on automatic maintenance. So if you want to know about that, it's our automatic maintenance video, which is part of our FileMaker Pro video course. So I'm scrolling down here and I'm looking for America, Los Angeles. Okay, that's the time zone I am in. I'm in uh, the Los Angeles time zone, the Pacific time zone. I'm going to say setup. And so now we get into another situation where uh, the configuration process is beginning. You can see the progress bar that's loading the following page. So there's really two sections of configuration that uh, happen. There was the first section where it spun up the initial instance and now the final configuration is occurring here and this will generally take uh, several minutes as well. So we'll let this skip forward. Now as a quick uh, sideshow here for those of you who are interested in this kind of stuff, this configuration is still going here. But if I bring up our Amazon console uh, right here which has all these great areas in it, once again the virtual servers are right here under EC2. I can see that now I do have a virtual server running. Pretty cool. I can click on this and I can see that we do now have a virtual server that is spinning up. Notice that the instance size is the T2 small. We are in the West Coast in this uh, 2 Charlie availability zone. And once again, um, if you're interested in knowing about availability zones, we talk about that in other videos. The instance is running and it is spinning up. So now we're just waiting for the FileMaker software to finish configuring. Now one thing to keep in mind is that this instance ID here is a unique ID specific to us. This instance ID is not used anywhere else anywhere in the world. So this is like a primary key in your FileMaker database for those of you who know what I'm talking about. If not, go check out my FileMaker Pro video training. But it's a unique serial number that's unique to us only. So we can check the status here at any time and then come back over here and then just wait for this to complete right here. So after three or four minutes we get to this dialog right here. Now the FileMaker cloud server should be set up and functional. Now if I click right here you'll see previous logins from my test server 7, test server 8, etc. like that. I'm just going to go ahead and manually input this because it hasn't been input before. And then I'm going to put password is my new password. And if you're on the Mac, it may ask you to save the password. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And we are logged in. We are in the console for the FileMaker Cloud. It is functional. The server is operational. This is our address if we want to put that into our launcher file or into our FileMaker Pro or Go software. That is how you're going to be able to identify the server don't use the IP address you're asking for trouble this is the address you need to use so at this point we don't have any databases installed etc so you're going to want to jump to the video on uploading your databases to the FileMaker cloud server